in today's video I'm going to be showing you a Cookie Monster design and I haven't done a whole bunch of Cookie Monster videos but I have done one or two in the past and I will put links to those in the description box below. But this one is a four dimensional Cookie Monster who is holding onto a cookie and the cookie half, one of the halves of the cookie is magnetic and it can either look like it's attached to the other half that he's holding in his hand or you can take it off and you can pop it into his mouth and it'll stay in his mouth too. Super cute, classic Cookie Monster brick background just because I feel like the brick kind of goes with Sesame Street and it just is fun if you've never done anything that's like that. Getting all the little bricks lined up is one of my favorite things because it's all mathematical and even and straight and you've got rules and I love rules like that. So I hope you guys like this as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. So to begin this brick background, take a light color, an off-white or kind of a beigey color, and just apply a very thin overlay over the nail. If you are doing this on top of a if an enhancement that you're going to be wearing, make sure that there is a clear acrylic base that's fairly strong underneath so that once you do these other layers that will not be filed on top, that they actually will withstand daily wear and tear. Now grab your favorite little mechanical pencil and you're going to draw a series of horizontal lines going across the nail tip. Then every other line you're going to be adding little um, vertical lines. So you're going to just sketch in where your bricks are. You're going to do in one set of lines, you're going to do just a series of those vertical lines going down and then do a second one drawing in the bricks and then go in between on those lines and in between all of them, one row down, add the second set. So your bricks are offset going kind of in a zigzag back and forth. Now grab red, orange, brown, a couple shades of red, darker red, burgundy, you know, a whole bunch of these brick colors or colors that would normally be found in bricks. And you're going to set them next to you all, open them all up and then grab a mix of the colors. So I started with, I did two colors per brick and I did a whole bunch of bricks that are the same two colors together. So it was like an orange and a brighter shade of red. And I'm going to first dip into whatever colors lighter. That's the general rule when you're going with um, a two-toned bead of acrylic or a double dipped bead. You always wanna go lighter first and then darker, but you're going to just grab and then fill them in kind of at random. Space them out a little bit, but the key here is to not overthink it, which is so difficult to do. And it's so tempting to just really plan it out. Like I said, I love rules with art. I said that in the intro. I love the, doing, the, doing the bricks because there's rules. Well, this is one of those moments where you want to try to forget the rules and not over plan it. Just place them, figure out where they go and do some of them with your first color scheme. After you have, you know, a good amount filled in. Try to base it on how many different color combinations you can do. So let's say you have four different colors. Know that you can only mix those up a certain number of times. You can really just do so much. So after you've got your first set done, say you decided on three color combinations that you have your colors laid out. And you know, if you do red and dark red, it's not going to show up that much. So try to vary them up a little bit, but you're like, yep, got three. So fill in a third of your bricks approximately with that first color combination. Then move on to your second color combination. This one is obviously darker than my first one. And then you're going to fill in approximately the same amount of bricks with that next color. As you can see, as you're filling in your bricks and you are kind of tucking them in so that they don't extend past their lines at all, you want to bring them in so that they are within the pencil mark. In theory, what you're left with after you have filled in all the bricks is essentially the width of that pencil mark. It might be a little bit bigger. It might be a little smaller. It might depend on the brick. The other thing that's going to happen is your pencil marks will become less visible as you are working. That is because the monomer that's on your brush will erase them. So as you are working, just be conscientious of the fact that you don't want to just go crazy with your brush and brush it all over the nail. You want to try to just work within the area that you are, are doing currently. With that being said, it's good that your monomer will erase these pencil lines because you don't necessarily want the pencil lines in the final product. You want to see that light cream color. So it's all right that your pencil lines get erased, but try not to erase ones that you still need as you are working. So you've got your secondary color. You filled in a good amount. I ended up with four different color combinations. And then I'm going to grab the third one and just keep filling them in. As you are filling in these bricks and you're going in and you've got the last little spots left, if you find that you have, for whatever reason, you didn't you know, space them out very well and you've got three bricks right in a row that are left all for the same color, you may want to switch that up so they don't all have the exact same color right next to each other. And some of your color combinations can be very similar. The one I'm working on now and the previous one are almost the same. Instead of like a medium red and a dark burgundy, it's the orange and the burgundy. So there's not that much difference, but it is a little different. Just try to, you know, 
switch it up a little bit here and there. Fill in all of these bricks as you are working on this. If you are doing this as part of a set with Cookie Monster, I think it would be absolutely amazing to do like French tip bricks and just a whole bunch of different things. I really like the brick look. It's one of those things that I don't know. It's very pleasing to me. It's very satisfactory. So just finish up all of those little spaces that you have left as you are getting into the last little bits, like on the edges and near the cuticle area, there's very little that shows. So make sure that as you're picking up your bead of acrylic, you pick up small beads because you don't want your bead of acrylic to go loose and flood any of the other bricks that you finished. You want to hopefully keep it as well contained to the area that you are working on as possible, which might be difficult depending on the acrylic system that you're using some of them spread very easily so one tip is after you picked up your bead of acrylic before you place it on the nail flip your brush over so that the acrylic bead is sitting on top of the bristles and press the back of the brush against your paper towel to pull some of that extra monomer out of the brush out of your acrylic so that it's not so soupy now we get to have the fun stuff we're going to make our cookie monster on a nail form backing sculpt a mouth shaped blob of black acrylic it doesn't have to be perfect tuck it in so it's a about the right size, about the right shape, but if it's a little uneven on the edges, that is a-okay, and place a magnet in the middle. After that magnet's in the middle, apply a little bit of black acrylic over the top of it so that that magnet will not go anywhere. Now with your blue cookie monster color, you're going to add the bottom of his mouth, his lower lip jaw area. So just make a big U-shape underneath the black, depending on how wide open you want his mouth to be. This might be bigger or smaller. And then with a something pokey, like a toothpick dipped into some of the blue acrylic powder, make little furry textures all over that lower lip. I'm going to then grab a larger bead of the blue acrylic and set that on the top of my black shape. And this is going to be for the top of Cookie Monster's head. I'm going to be pushing that acrylic forward and kind of pulling it up. And that is going to be to create a little bit of height above his mouth. So it looks like it's sticking forward. Same thing after you've got the shape down, grab your toothpick, dip it in the blue acrylic powder, and just basically stab Cookie Monster's face to get the fur texture in there. It sounds more violent than it really is. Trust me, it works out pretty well. I find that a plastic floss pick, I've been using the same one for years, is the best thing for this type of a situation. You could use a wooden toothpick if you wanted to, but those, because there is a little bit more texture, there's the wood grain, it will collect acrylic and it won't last as long. Whereas my plastic floss pick, I have cleaned it off and kept using it. So that's up to you. I know that the desire to not use plastic is pretty big, especially, you know, there's some people more than others that have that. If that's the case, then you may consider, you know, making a decision at what's appropriate. After you have your cookie monster this far, you're going to press a magnet into kind of to the side of his mouth down a little low. This is where he's going to be holding that other piece of the cookie and cover it with blue acrylic. As you can see, I first set the magnet on top of the one that's already in his mouth. That way I know that for the um, positive and negative poles, they'll be facing the same direction. So you just pick up, pick the magnet up off the one that's already in the nail and set it down without allowing it to flip over. Next to Cookie Monster, you're going to sculpt his two eyes with white acrylic. The reason you do not want to sculpt them directly on his face is because of that fur texture, you wouldn't get nice smooth lines on the outside of the circles and they would just look a little bit rough and bumpy. But if you sculpt them separately and then attach them, you don't have to worry about that. To attach them, just grab some white acrylic, clear acrylic, or blue acrylic and place it underneath where you want the eyeball. Pick the eyeball up off the nail form backing and then you can go ahead and you can set down the other one, just like so. Once that's done, I would take some clear acrylic or blue acrylic and add a little bit more behind the eyes to make sure that they really are secured. And then I found my eyeballs weren't quite as smooth and dome shaped as I would prefer. So I'm going to add a smidge more white acrylic to the very top of them. Place yet another magnet on top of any of them. And then you're going to just put a little red squiggle on the top of it to know which side is up. It can be any color, just with a permanent marker, put a squiggle on the top of the magnet. It's just a good little trick to help. Then using a multicolored bead of a very pale yellow and a tan acrylic, I'm going to be making my cookie. Set that multicolored bead down on your nail form backing and then work with your cookie to kind of stab and poke and push and pull it into a rough circle. And then I'm going to use an X-Acto knife that is dipped into acrylic powder to cut my cookie into maybe not quite half, but into two pieces. And then I'm just going to try to, you know, keep working on this, keep pressing it into this crazy shape that I'm working on, getting my two cookie pieces separated. If they do seem like they're starting to touch again, it is okay, because once that line has been cut, as long as they aren't completely stuck back together, they will snap apart after it's cured. Kind of like perforation. It's, you know, you're just making it so that you can have a break point. 
With a darker shade of brown, I'm going to be adding all my chocolate chips. I personally am a chocolate chip cookie person. I adore chocolate chip cookies. And so whenever the opportunity comes up and I'm like, a cookie, it's always chocolate chip because that is, you know, it's a classic. It really is. So I'm just going to go through, make sure that you sculpt some of your chocolate chips that go from one side of the cookie to the other to really sell that this is the same cookie. And then after you have that, remove it from the nail firm backing and break it apart. Now you've got your magnetic side of your cookie and your non-magnetic side of the cookie. The cookie without the magnet, you have to attach permanently to your cookie monster. So place the one with the magnet over the magnet in his side area, and then with them right next to each other, attach the one without the magnet so that you know it's in the right spot. After you have the one that is without the magnet, attached you can move the one with the magnet around it doesn't have to stay there anymore but just while you're getting that one in the right spot make sure you have them lined up back to your blue acrylic we're going to be making cookie monsters fingers i'm going to take in with that blue acrylic gently sculpt it into three finger shapes where they will be going up and over the cookie remove the magnetic portion of the cookie move it off to the side so it's not in the way grab your fingers stab them with your little toothpick and then after they are appropriately furry and a little bit a little bit bendable still but mostly cured pick them up set them over the top of the cookie piece that is in or already attached to cookie monster and then secure everything on the back with clear acrylic add more clear acrylic from cookie monster to the cookie and then from the cookie to his hand clear acrylic once again you're going to attach cookie monster to the nail if you were to make this into a necklace or something, which I think would be amazingly adorable, you would not attach it to the nail. Instead, you attach a loop so that you could use this as a pendant and put it over a chain on the back. Such a cute idea. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. And then after I have my cookie monster nicely attached, I'm going to take a lighter shade of blue and I'm going to be washing over all of his fur to really pull out that fur texture that we worked on. Depending on your personal art preferences, you may or may not want to do that. I think it really adds a lot of detail. But like I said, if it's not your thing, you can skip that part because the fur texture is very detailed and very intense. So it's there. You don't necessarily have to. With black paint, I'm going to be adding his pupils. Do not make them facing the same direction. One should be looking to one side. One should be looking up and off to the other side. And then I'm going to apply matte top coat over Mr. Cookie Monster. And that's it. It's all done. You don't have to do any top coat on the background. The cookie doesn't need any top coat. As soon as his fur is sealed and his eyes are sealed, he's good to go. I hope you guys like him as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all of my future videos as well.